Okay, so today I'm going to do something a little bit different to my previous discussions of sound synthesis in Reaper, in that I'm going to talk about melodic sound generation as opposed to the generation of percussion sounds. And I thought the best way to start a discussion of melodic sound generation would be with an instrument that is very easy to replicate, uh, at, at least replicate in some form, in an, a digital audio workstation, uh, which is, uh, as you would uh, no doubt be aware uh, by the title of this video, is the theremin. Uh, now, if you've never played a theremin before, uh, or if you've never heard one in music, uh, you might be unfamiliar with what a theremin sounds like. Uh, so just uh, to demonstrate, I'll, I'll show you what a theremin sounds like, uh, or uh, what a theremin can sound like. That's it. <laughs> At its most base form, uh, a theremin is just a sine wave, or can be just a sine wave. Uh, most real analog theremins will have, you know, various different permutations of sine waves, triangle waves, saw waves, which you can, you know, switch between uh, to create your actual tone that you're going to be using. Uh, but generally, uh, the default sound for most theremins is just a sine wave, uh, because. Um, Obviously, um, I mean, if, if you've never if you've never played a theremin, or if if you don't know what a theremin looks like, I'd advise you go Google it now. Uh, but a theremin is essentially a device where you play by uh, moving your hands in relation to two rods, one of which controls amplitude and one of which controls pitch. And obviously, with just those two parameters to play with, you can't really alter the timbre of what you're playing that much. So the default timbre, obviously, uh, is just sine wave uh, because. That's the easiest tone for a computer to make. Uh, and a theremin is, at its core, just a very small computer. Um, so yeah, the default for, as you'd imagine, with any device where what you're controlling is just the pitch and the amplitude in a very artificial way, the default tone is a sine wave. Um, but, um, as you would know if you've ever played a theremin, the sine wave in that form isn't really a very realistic sound. That's not the kind of sound we'd typically expect from an actual theremin. But we can make some adjustments to uh, to get it to sound more like what we would actually be hearing most of the time. And the first of those is to add vibrato. Now, one of the reasons the theremin was originally invented, uh, it's kind of inventor, you know, wanted it to be part of the class classical canon, much in the way a violin is. Uh, and one of the things he he thought was best about his new instrument was that the vibrato that could be that could be uh, played on a theremin was much more expressive than that of, say, a violin, uh, because obviously on a violin, vibrato is, you know, the amount of distance that you can have in vibrato is very small. You, you know, just moving your finger up and down the string a very small amount. But with a theremin, because uh, because you can move your hand uh, as close to or as far away. Uh, to the rods as you want to, uh, vibrato is essentially infinite in terms of how large you want to make it. Um, so let's try and get some vibrato on this nice little sine wave here. And the way we're going to do that is just by uh, setting an LFO to the uh, fine tune of this sine wave. Uh, you can see we've got our LFO here. And uh, put it to centered, and then now it should sound like that which is technically vibrato, but it doesn't sound like anything we'd ever play. Um, so, for something more realistic, uh, because this is currently just doing, uh, you know, all the complete range of, uh, the, uh, of the parameter here, which is from uh, 200 cents to minus 200 cents, so we're just getting, you know, uh, four semitones of just pitch modulation, uh, back up and down and up and down and up and down, uh, which is not really the kind of realistic vibrato sound you typically want. So set the strength to, let's say, 20%, and also up the up the frequency to get that kind of uh, more realistic, quicker vibrato, um, rather than something that's going back and forth very slowly. Um, so let's say 6. Um, actually, you know what? Since we've set our strength to 20, we can set our... Um, set our speed uh, to 4. Because uh, that, that's, that's, I think, a way to get a really nice uh, tone out of this vibrato. So that's sounding like a vibrato, but it's still not sounding quite like a theremin. Partly because there's a lot of bass tones in there. And 
on a typical theremin, uh, we'd be working with kind of a tinny speaker. Uh, so, what we can do is just filter out all of those low frequencies. And that's sounding a lot more like it. Um, and, I, I mean, if we're going to be talking about vibrato, um, I mean, obviously, the... You know, as you would know if you've looked up, a, if you've gone and Googled a diagram of a theremin uh, while watching this video, which I advise you do, um, the other rod that you that you can uh, play with is amplitude, uh, as well as pitch. So now that we've done vibrato, uh, we should logically do the vibrato of amplitude, which of course is tremolo. And we can do that in kind of a similar way, just by uh, adding another EQ to this, and then going into the uh, wet for the EQ, and setting that to another LFO, uh, which we can make a little bit slower, uh, I think. Uh, so set that to also about 20, um, and set it to, you know, um, not 2, uh, because we want, we want the tremolo and the vibrato to have kind of a more complicated relationship. Uh, there rather than just, you know, a 4 over 2 polyrhythm, oh, I mean, it's not even, even a polyrhythm because they're, um, you know, one is a factor of the other, but, um, you know, we don't want a simple polyrhythm occurring here, uh, so we'll just set as, you know, any, basically a rational number will do. Um, and then go into the gain for that EQ and set it to something significantly lower uh, than Unity so that we can have that sound of, as the wet for this EQ comes in and out, we're going to have the gain uh, on the theremin changing uh, according to the LFO. So it'll sound something like this. And then if we, then if we put it on a, a centered so that we can actually hear it, uh, sorry about that, um, we'll get something that sounds something like this, yeah. which is much closer to what you'd actually be hearing typically from a theremin if you're playing kind of imprecisely with both the pitch and the amplitude at the same time. So this is really all you need for a very basic theremin tone, but I thought as this is the uh, first video on uh, melodic elements in uh, Reaper-based synthesis, it'd be appropriate to write a melody with this. Um, and so I also thought that... um it'd be best to use probably the most famous melody on the theremin ever, which is the uh, little riff from Good Vibrations by the Beach Boys. Um, not Theremin enthusiasts will argue about whether it's actually a theremin uh, or not in uh, Good Vibrations, because the, the version of the theremin that is used in the song is a little bit different in terms of its setup, but the sound is essentially identical to a theremin, so for our purposes, it's a theremin. Um, and just to save a little time, I've just gone out and drawn up, uh, uh, like a guide to how to write the melody from Good Vibrations. Uh, it took me a few minutes just, uh, kind of writing it down by ear and also just going onto, you know, a, a table for, um, uh, converting notes to, uh, values in hertz on the internet. Um, the rest is just kind of done by ear. I'm not sure how accurate any of this is, um, but I think it sounds all right. Um. So yeah, I tapped out the tempo earlier at 152 BPM, so that's how we're going to be writing our melody. Um, and uh, how we're going to be actually um, changing the pitch in this melody is not, as you might think, by going into uh, notes or indeed to octaves and altering what's happening there. What we're going to be doing is changing the bass frequency in hertz. Um, because if, if you um, add any data to... Uh, the note parameter, what it'll start doing is switching between notes. So between uh, A, A sharp, B, etc. as you go up, rather than uh, switching between frequencies in hertz in a more, you know, in a, in a gliding fashion, um, in, a, in a fluid fashion. Um, uh, because for when we're working with a theremin, uh, we want to have that glissando sound rather than, you know, it jumping up in intervals of, uh, of you know, clearly delineated notes. Um, so the note is going to stay at A0 for the entire time, 
and we're just going to uh, add. Uh, sorry, we're just going to modulate the base frequency for all of this. Um, and so yeah, um, I just went earlier and uh, grabbed all the notes that I could hear in the melody, and I just converted them to hertz frequent uh, to um yeah hertz values. Uh, so I can just go in and write them all in now. Okay, so that's all of the notes of the Good Vibrations melody right there. Um, so let's see what it sounds like. So that's obviously not quite the iconic Good Vibrations melody that we need. Um, in fact, it sounds quite dissonant, because we're not getting of the, any of those nice notes. <laughs> we're not getting any of those nice... No, that's a bad way to say it. We're not getting any of those nice regular intervals that we'd expect. It just kind of sounds like it's meaninglessly sliding uh, from place to place. So. What we can do to change that um, is uh, say that we want it to stick on the notes that we're talking about uh, for a particular amount of time, for a set amount of time. And so, uh, because we're working with... Because, and this is just based on my observations of what the original sounds like, so this might be you know, slightly incorrect. Um, uh, it operates mostly within triplets. Uh, so what we can do here is just go in and say, okay, uh, that's starting on uh, 622 hertz, and it's going to stay there uh, for uh, two-thirds of a crotchet, and then it's going to start moving. So now we get that kind of defined note before we start moving, rather than just moving from place to place quite rapidly. So we can just go ahead and write that in for all of the note transitions. Okay. Okay, so if we listen to back, if we listen back to this now, it's starting to sound a lot more like a melody. Still a little strange, but it's sounding kind of recognizably like good vibrations. Um, but there are still a few things that we can do to get it to sound more like the original. Um, so one of those things is we can actually go back to the vibrato that we set earlier and make it, uh, you know, make it uh, coherent within the framework of the tempo that we're working in. Um, so the vibrato, if I'm hearing it correctly in the original, uh, is actually not just any, you know, random LFO, uh, but it is quaver triplets, which in the tempo of 152 BPM, uh, you know, with, with a handy few calculations that I did earlier, um, is 7.6 hertz or thereabouts. Uh, so we can set that to that. Um, and then I, estim I estimated the, um, the, the uh, depth of the vibrato at about 30 cents. Uh, which, because we're working within, uh, you know, a, f a framework of um, uh, a hundred cents either way, is fifteen percent strength. Um, uh, so now that we've changed the vibrato to sound like that, uh, it's starting to sound a fair bit more like what we'd originally had. Um, and in terms of the uh, tremolo, we can just kind of turn that down a fair bit more because that's not really a part of the um, of the original melody. Um, and then, as I've written up the top there, um, the composite waveforms, so the uh, waveforms that are going into making up, I guess, uh, this... Uh, the, the, the original melody are not just sine, but also triangle uh, waves. So what we can do for that is just uh, quickly duplicate the track, 
and just add a version which is doing exactly the same thing, but with a sine wave. Uh, sorry, with a triangle wave, uh, I should say, rather. And if we listen to that back... That sounds quite odd. Uh, so, we can take the other one down. We can take the triangle wave down quite a bit. That's sounding quite good, I think. Um, but what we can also do is just add a little more EQ to take off some of that extreme low end and extreme high end. Um, and we can also just add a little bit of reverb, just a little bit. which kind of masks some of those nastier sounds that we were getting in the transitions from one note to another. So there you have it. Let's listen to that just one time again. That's the iconic Good Vibrations riff, uh, recreated in about ten minutes, I think, uh, just with a very simple theremin tone. Uh, so... Once you kind of familiarize yourself with the basics of what each waveform does, what each waveform sounds like, and how melodies can be created through uh, reference not to, uh, you know, typical Western shooting, but to absolute pitch, uh, which requires a fair bit of mathematical knowledge and also just, you know, familiarizing oneself with what the pitches of notes are, uh, what kind of, you know, the, the relationships between different notes, the relationships between... Uh, you know, different intervals, um, and the relationships even between one tuning system and another. Uh, but, uh, once you've got your head around all that kind of stuff, creating melodies uh, and imitating theremin melodies in Reaper or really any other kind of digital audio workstation where you can work with pure sine waves is very simple. And I think it's a very interesting and a very useful way to get a kind of something that resembles an instrument that actually exists in the real world uh, through computer synthesis. Uh, it's certainly the easiest Im instrument to imitate, I think. In part because the even the analog form of the theremin is somewhat computerized in terms of how the tone is made. Uh, really, there is no such thing as a, a truly analog theremin in a way, uh, because it's all working in terms of uh, waveform synthesis in one way or another, even if, obviously, the original theremin design is a much more primitive form than we're working with with a laptop. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope this has been uh, informative for anyone who wants to make uh, an imitation theremin tone uh, with a computer. Um, it's something that I do quite often to get kind of sign, uh, sorry, not sign, sci-fi uh, sounds, uh, because the theremin is an instrument often used in science fiction schools. Um, movie scores, that kind of thing. So yeah, uh, that's an, a very brief introduction to melodic content uh, created from scratch in Reaper. And hopefully as we move along, uh, things will get a fair bit more complex and a fair bit more varied. Uh, so, but that's just an introduction to the theremin, which I think is a very good place to start if you're interested in generating melodies completely from scratch. So there you go. Thanks for watching.